And a lot of times there's that huge um, debate or that discussion around whether it's better to buy or to rent. Mm -hmm. And some people just opt for renting because they're like, it's so much easier. I just sign a lease, I go in and I don't have all these maintenance issues to deal with. Um, let's talk us, uh, or rather talk us through uh, some of the benefits one gets by owning and purchasing a home. Buying your first home can be intimidating. Fear not. We are here to guide you through the steps of becoming a first-time homeowner. Join us as we simplify the process and break it down so that you can start the process of becoming an owner. This is the Private Property Podcast. I'm Dumi. Good evening. Congratulations once again to Mohale Mohale for walking away with 500 Rand cash from yesterday's show. Thank you so much for engaging with us, Mohale. And hopefully your weekend is starting off on a good note. You can be just like him because winning is easy here on the Private Property Podcast. Join the conversation tonight on Facebook by commenting as many times as you can. And when you're commenting, be, uh, be, mention your friends, tag your friends, comment with your experiences if you're a first-time owner and you could walk away with 500 Rand cash for just sharing your thoughts we all know that knowledge is power and sharing knowledge is exactly the reason why we are here especially when it comes to property these are the property no-nos for a first-time home buyer number one don't allow emotions to influence your decisions the spending doesn't stop after you buy a house. There's moving, repairs, decorating, and so on. After that, you have utility bills. If you haven't budgeted for these adequately, these bills can pile up quite quickly. Number two, don't underestimate the running costs of a home. Being prepared will not only minimize the stress of the process, it will also allow you to save money from the get-go and minimize the possibility of accumulating unnecessary and unforeseen debt. Number three, don't rush your decision without proper, without proper research. Take your time to map out your home buying journey well. Bear in mind how long you will need to save money, repair poor credit, as well as apply for pre-approval. Number four, don't be unsure of your affordability. Understand how much you can afford to spend to, as well as the type of bond you, will, you can expect to get from a bank. See how much you qualify for before you take that plunge. We hope that you enjoyed the, private, the property no-nos, especially if you are one of those people who are prospectively going into the market to buy a home. Remember, forewarned is forearmed because if you have a clear understanding of the process, it will also allow you to have a clear plan of action. You can easily avoid costly mistakes and enjoy your first home because you are meant to enjoy it. It's a beautiful achievement that you don't want to turn into a little misery. A couple of weeks ago, I sat down with a head of sales who has demonstrated history of working with information as well as um, um, information services in the property industry. Luckily for us, she will dissect and break down the daunting process of buying your first home. She is the head of digital at Limestone. Her name is Haley Ivan Downs. Thank you to me. Thank you for the opportunity. It's awesome to be here. Thank you so much. You know, we 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 try as much as possible to bring people like yourself who are seasoned, you know, in, in their in their field to come talk to our, our Facebook family, even those who are joining us on Twitter on the spaces and people who come back onto our podcast to listen and hear these tips. And I want us to jump straight in and talk about first time um, buyers. Do you remember the first time you bought a property? Do you do you remember the feeling? Do you remember some of the things that were going in, in your mind? I do, absolutely. Um, it was 20 years ago, to be exact. It was completely daunting. I was, it was overwhelming. All of a sudden, you have a huge amount of money that you now have to start paying off. But you have your own property, and along comes that with that as maintenance. So it was just, it was kind of twofold, very exciting, very daunting, all in one. 
Sure. And talk us through the process. Like, what is the, the general process um, of acquiring a property? How does it look? You know, um, some people think, ah, oh, we, know, we know this already, but maybe there's somebody who's watching us for the first time tonight and doesn't know how the process looks and sometimes doesn't even know that it's so detailed and so intricate and um, daunting, as you have mm -hmm. said. So please just talk us through that process and how it typically looks. Okay. So I think, firstly, if you're deciding you're going to own a property, I think that's kind of the first step. Then you need to understand what you can actually afford. And I would recommend obviously doing an affordability calculator, or using one of the calculators on the banks, one of the mortgage originator sites, but really getting a sense in terms of what you can afford before you start looking. Once you have a sense in terms of what you can afford, start then looking at different locations around where you're wanting to live. Obviously for yourself, be it close to work, be it close to school if they're children, be it close to an entertainment area or shopping, but make sure that your location is kind of really kind of pinned down to where you're wanting to be. That becomes really important. Then starts the process in terms of looking. So there's a couple of portals that you can go and look at. Um, finding a property that have been listed, um, seeing what's available, and really start getting out there and just looking at properties before you kind of decide which one actually really appeals. And it's quite tricky to kind of know which one that you're going to settle on. Once you've settled on your property, you start the process with an estate agent, obviously through an OTP, which is an offer to purchase. That obviously goes in with the estate agent. If you're looking to bond the property, the request for finance will then go through to a bank. The banks through Originator could give you a couple of options in terms of any rates kind of that they're wanting to offer you. You then have an opportunity then to take up a bond with the bank. Then the process really starts in terms of the conveyancing, registering the property. There are mountains of forms that need to be filled in. It obviously gets registered through the deeds, the conveyances on the selling side and obviously on the, on the, the buying side with the bond also being registered. So just being mindful of that process. Um, and once all of that has happened, you then obviously get into your house. Um, through that process as well, the big thing to remember is also the rates clearances. So the estate agent will help you with that as well um, and make sure that you get all of the rates, water, electricity, all of that signed up as well. Sure. You know, as you said, this, this process is daunting and there's a lot of paperwork. There's a lot of admin that mm. goes into it. And a lot of times there's that huge um, debate or that discussion around whether it's better to buy or to rent. Mm. And some people just opt for renting because they're like, it's so much easier. I just sign a lease, I go in and I don't have all these maintenance issues to deal with. Um, let's talk us, uh, or rather talk us through mm. uh, some of the benefits one gets by owning and purchasing a home. Okay. So I think if you choose to own a, own a property, you are obviously buying an investment. This is essentially your property. This could be a long-term investment. You could opt to then keep it for many years. You could live in it for a number of years and then obviously opt out, move out and rent it yourself as an investment. I think the, the element of owning a property is almost just some level of ownership. You've got an investment. Uh, Renting is very different. Um, but I think also, once again, very much based on affordability. Um, I personally prefer to own a property than to rent a property. Um, I think there's something to be said in terms of owning your own, your own house. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, the housing market was really affected by COVID. And um, when you're talking yeah. about some of those benefits, so many people also lost their homes mm. because of affordability and yes. for them not being able to afford um, their homes during mm. COVID-19. Um, let's talk a little bit more about how um, this has affected um, the market. It has affected people's pockets, uh, mm. people's um, ability to, to be homeowners and um, what, how, how the market is changing and now uh, augmenting because of COVID-19. Mm. So COVID was a really interesting kind of pandemic that really struck South Africa and spe specifically the property market. What we found was for almost two to three months when it initially COVID hit, the, the property market literally ground to a halt. Um, obviously, all of the deeds offices were all closed, so no properties could really transact and, and register. So the important thing here for us is obviously it affected many people on different levels, um, people that almost lost their jobs. Um, that obviously then couldn't afford to live in the house and then obviously had to sell and then obviously rent. But I think on the, on the other side of that, it also changed the way that people were working. So the pandemic meant that people could work anywhere and from anywhere. 
Um, and I think that in itself also changed the pattern of where people wanted to live. So what we found was quite a few people deciding that they didn't actually need to live in a big city anymore. They could do a bit of a semigration down to a coastal uh, little town that would be absolutely fine and they could do all of their meetings and interactions from a town, which meant that the property market was actually quite buoyant after COVID. So for the first year and a half, two years, we've seen the property market at levels that it's never been before since like 2008. So um, the property market really bounced back. Um, and I think for people that were obviously looking at buying, it was a really good time. A couple of interesting kind of snippets was that the interest rate was at an all time low, the lowest that it's ever been for the last 50 years. Mm. Um, it was a complete kind of, you know, to buy a property was the opportunity. And in, in, in the opposite effect, we saw the rental mark, market taking a bit of a dive. Um, people could now afford their own property. So, you know, the, the market then kind of swung up in terms of buying of property. So it's really interesting in terms of the effect. It was an effect from COVID that we weren't anticipating, to be quite honest. Um, and it was really driven, I think, by the change in the work environment. Um, there was a sudden realization that one didn't need to be in the office. Mm. No, uh, please, let's, let's also come back a little bit to say, for a first time buyer, mm. um, how would, would being what would COVID have changed the market for them? You spoke a little bit about the interest rate, but mm. was that the only thing? You know, it, we've been seeing all of these mm. other things um, change in the market and the way people do business mm. change. So is is interest rates the only advantage that they had during COVID-19 or were there other things that you guys noted um, who, who are in the industry? Um, I think the interest being low was the main kind of driver um, and also the fact that you could work anywhere. So I think all of a sudden, you know, the fact that you could work anywhere meant that you could live anywhere. And now you could actually go and purchase a property of your affordability anywhere and still work from there. So I think that was also the driving factor that you weren't, for instance, working in Santon but couldn't afford to live in Santon. Mm. You know, now you could actually go and buy a property anywhere, even though your office was based in Santon. So I think that was also part of the driving, driving factor of it. Sure. Um, and any any other disadvantages that you guys have seen um, in terms of uh, one purchasing a home, in terms of one getting into the process, starting the process and um, ending up needing to retract from the process because maybe there's something that went wrong or there's a change in one's life. Um, do you, are there any specific incidents maybe that you have seen that you, you may use as advice to someone who is a first time buyer? I think always just be mindful of the process and just keep communicating with your estate agent if you're working through an estate agent. It becomes really important to know where the transaction is. So there is a cooling off period obviously through the offer to purchase stage. So at any point in that cooling off period, the seller could obviously also opt to cool off of the transaction. So just be mindful of that. Um, and anywhere through the process, if suddenly something becomes apparent, like a latent defect or any kind of those processes, there is some level of kind of awareness of that as well that could happen. But, you know, that's kind of the process. And use a, a, a property professional like an estate agent to help you and guide you through that process, because there's a lot of unknowns for anybody purchasing a property. Sure. Thank you so much for that. And thank you so much for joining us and giving us such great insights for, for first time buyers who are really looking at getting their uh, bagging that property and really living in it and enjoying it. Um, then the information you gave us was extremely helpful. And I'm sure everybody who's watching us tonight will make that decision with confidence. Now, thank you so much for joining us and have a good night. Thank you. What a very insightful conversation we had there with Haley, where we were helping first-time buyers and people who are prospectively going into the market to prepare for, for getting those homes. I'm just going to hop onto social media to quickly take some comments and maybe share some love before I tell you who the winner of today's competition is or to, to the winner of today's prize is. Um, just sending out love to Anelda. Anelda Everton is here. Thank you so much, Anelda. Happy Friday to you too. Hope you've been having a brilliant week joining us every night here on the Private Property Podcast. It was a very interesting topic and thank you so much to, to Rita as well. Rita, thank you so much. Uh, we, we see you, Rita. Magoan uh, Shongwe. Thank you so much for joining us. And Sate even Sato also is joining us. And Polina Nkosi, as usual, is here. Thank you so much, Polina, for always engaging with us. We really see those 
we really see the love coming through. And yes, we are hashtag road to 500, 500 episodes. I nearly said 500 grand because that is the amount you can win if you keep engaging with us on the comment section. Thank you so much to Princess Nkosi as well, who is here tonight, sending those green hearts, marking the register. It's very important when we get here as, as the regulars to share also the conversation with anybody we believe is going to benefit from hearing the conversation tonight. So I have it under good authority that the winner for tonight is in. I'm, sh I'm sure everybody is now sitting at the edge of their seats to know who the winner uh, of tonight's 500 Rand cash prize goes to. And the winner, ladies and gentlemen, is, drum roll please, it goes to Paulina Nkosi, one of our absolute favorites here at the Private Property Podcast. Thank you so much, Paulina, for always staying around and engaging, commenting, and even sharing, you know, with your friends and your family. We really, really appreciate it. If you want to be like Paulina, catch us every weekday right here at the Private Property Podcast, where we share everything and anything about uh, about property um, also do remember to like share and subscribe to all our social media platforms so that you don't miss a beat when we are having those conversations around on the past topics about everything and anything property thank you so much for joining us tonight hope you have a beautiful night a beautiful weekend see till we see you next week have a good one <laughs>